We are live, so good afternoon. All right, good afternoon, friends and uh, chamber followers and uh, members out there that are joining us today. We are excited to be here today for our sixth edition of Chamber Talk with Tori. Uh, podcast. This is sponsored by the Boardman Chamber of Commerce and joining me today is Steve Vincent with Avista Utilities. They're an electrical and gas uh, utilities. Yes. And um, so welcome Steve. Thanks for Thank joining you, me Tori. today. Thank you for inviting me and yes. I appreciate it. Yes. Um, this was one of those things like, hey, you're in town. Guess what you can do? Get on my podcast with me, right? right. And here we are. Yeah. This is a great opportunity to talk to chamber members about the energy sector. Yeah. Hopefully we can make it interesting and exciting. <laughs> as much as we can about <laughs> yeah, that, right? that's right. So let's get started. Just tell me a little bit about you and how you got into your position. Yep. So uh, for Avista Utilities, I'm the Oregon Regional Business Manager. It's a role that's corporate philanthropy and community affairs. And that's how I know Tori is that here in Boardman, you know, a lot of our philanthropy is through the chamber's events. We have a scholarship at the River High, Riverside High School each year, yeah. and at one time it supported the Kiwanis uh, and even the medical center uh, when they were fundraising for that capital campaign. So that was my role uh, for Avista is to uh, help the communities where we serve as a utility, or in this case in Boardman, we have the Coyote Springs Power Plant. Um, so my role at Avista came, I actually was a legislative aide in the Oregon legislature at the same time that Greg Smith oh. was an aide all the <laughs> way back in the 90s. Uh, he ran for office in much uh, different trajectory than mine. Uh, he's done a, a lot of amazing things for yeah. the House District and you know certainly this part of Oregon. And, um, so that there's where I was in the early 90s and then moved into a uh, more of a governmental affairs role for Avista Utilities, which then led to community affairs uh, here mm -hmm. in Boardman and other parts of Oregon that we, we serve. Oh, wonderful. So um, let's talk about a little bit, um, just kind of a little bit, dig, dig, dig a little deeper into Avista, like yeah. what is Avista Utility? So, so for people who are been here local for a long time, may be familiar with Washington Water Power. Washington Water Power is an electric utility that was founded on the Spokane River in the 1880s. Oh, really? And so we built our first power plant in 1889 in downtown Spokane on the river, and it's been operating ever since. So 130 some odd years later, we're still operating. Uh, we did a name change in the late 90s from Washington Water Power to a Vista Utilities. Not an ownership change, just a name change. And so our utility service is predominantly Eastern Washington, you know, as far over as Othello, and then uh, into Northern Idaho, from Lewiston all the way up to Bonners Ferry, uh, uh -huh. is both electric and natural gas. So that's the Eastern Washington and Northern Idaho side. In Oregon, there's about a 100-year-old gas utility uh, that is predominantly Southern Oregon, and it came up for sale in the late 1980s, and so Washington Water Power purchased it, and uh, in Eastern Oregon, it includes La Grande. Oh. So we serve Southern Oregon <laughs> with natural gas. So here in Boardman is Cascade, and in Portland, it's Northwest Natural, and we just have different communities that we serve. Oh. Um, once upon a time, a long time ago, our utility uh, served Baker. I don't think that we served Umatilla or Pendleton, but there, there's that history of it. So why are we in Boardman? So Portland General Electric built Coyote Springs yep. some decades ago, <laughs> and there was a uh, permit for the second unit or the half of the building that's to the east. And so we bought the permit from PGE okay. to build a second turbine. So we built that in the late 1990s and it began operating all around 2000. So here in Boardman, we actually don't have any employees. The plant is operated by Portland General Electric and it's their employees that operate our half of the power plant. We just send the electrons through the transmission system okay. up to Spokane. 
So that's why why we're here in Boardman. So but the challenge is, is that I don't have any employees that yeah. live in Boardman. I don't have any employees that work in Boardman. And so when we try to think about our role in philanthropy yes. in the community, that's why I come to see you. Right, exactly. Is <laughs> that uh, our, our way to give back to the community, I think is predominantly through the chamber. And then there are a few other things that we tend to do. Yeah. So there's the history uh, of a Vista Utilities. <laughs> 130 some odd years, years history. Of, that's amazing to be around that long and kind of transformed through all the things you've done and yeah. kind of weaved your way through to what you guys are today. It's pretty right. amazing. But yes, we are very thankful. Uh, Vista does sponsor quite a few of our events. Um, and then those events support our um, Riverside High School Senior Scholarship yeah. Program that right. we do. And we just finished an event um, last weekend, and we were able to raise a little over eleven thousand wow. dollars for our scholarship program. Yes. So now we are expanding our scholarship program into um, high school graduating high school seniors and into their secondary education too. Right. So now we're not only just supporting them once; we're going to support yeah. them through their entire education. Right. As long as you are a senior that receives a scholarship, you're eligible for the rest of your secondary okay. education. Right. So now we can continue because you know scholarships usually last like the first or second year. Yeah, right. And then they're like, you know what, you're old enough, you gotta figure this out. Well, we want to yeah. support those kids that get that education. Right. And encourage them to come back because we like yeah. to grow our own. Right. And and I know whoever's listening to the <laughs> podcast knows this that um, the students at Riverside are amazing. Uh, so just before walking in here to see you, I was trading emails with Elizabeth Rosen. Yes. Uh, about the yep. next round of scholarships now. I don't want to be, have to review all of them. I'd like to, uh, but I don't. I'm not sure I'm the best at evaluating. So uh, every year, I ask the school to evaluate the applicants and make the decision. But the the next uh, scholarship event is, I think, in late May, yep. and I hope to be able to come and sit in. It, it's so much fun to sit and listen to where the students are gonna to go to school, yes. what they're gonna study, but it's even gotta be in the trades. Yes. You know, not just four-year universities, yes. but if uh, students are looking for a certificate or a two-year degree, yes. something uh, that just better than better themselves. I'm always impressed though, it just the, the poise of the students at the school, and then the, the whole interaction of the scholarship event itself. So yes. great. Great for board and great for the school. It is. Um, a great group of students there. They do. And you have a, it's so fun to see those kids and, you know, they're getting ready to go and they're signing their day. They get to sign that day. And right. it's just a great day to celebrate yep. the kids. So, it is. Yeah. Um, and we, so we talked about locally and regionally. So um, what energy consumers will see here in the near future for Oregon and Washington? I you know there's changes happening at the legislative level. Yeah, so between Governor Inslee and Governor Brown, uh, or former Governor Brown and yeah. Governor Kotek, you know, a, a lot of push either through executive order or through the legislatures uh, to change public policy that affects how electric and natural gas utilities uh, operate in Washington and Oregon. Um, and in their effort in adopting these public policies is to address climate change. Now, at Avista, we also serve Idaho, so there's also a very <laughs> different perspective. And, and for the most part, the uh, outside the Willamette Valley communities that we serve, uh, I think most of our customers or the constituencies um, think a little bit different than Portland, but just out of all respect, I'll just tell you uh, what we as utilities see uh, transition due to pressure from uh, elected leaders at the state level, uh, which one is to shift all power generation um, to renewables. Yeah. And that's where you see, you know, the wind turbines and, you know, the large utility scale solar being proposed in Morrow or Grant counties and you know we see a lot of wind turbines in yeah. both these counties and Sherman uh, but so so you're seeing that growth in power generation um, you know to be honest that's going to be expensive for the consumer it's great for the communities that land all these assets right. because now you've got the capital investment and the property taxes that come behind it 
uh, but I think uh, electric utility consumers are, are going to see increases in power rates. One, for us as electric utilities to be able to uh, <clears throat> be compliant with those laws. Now, Umatel Electric, being a BPA utility, <clears throat> isn't subject to that, right? Oh. And if, um, if Umatel had to chase a lower carbon footprint, but you've got the hydro system is where the power comes yeah. in the boardman. So, um, you know, I think a boardman in, you know, from Hermiston to where Umatel Electric's uh, service territory is, mm -hmm. great for those communities and for those residents and small businesses that still have to have power. Um, I think that the shock won't be there as much as it's going to be on the private utilities that, mm -hmm. you know, we still have generation fleets. Fortunately for Avista, we're pre predominantly hydro on the Spokane River, and so our transition isn't going to be as difficult as it will be for companies like Portland General Electric or Pacific Power in transitioning the generators that are you know behind the, the power that they they deliver. So that'll be the challenge. On the natural gas side, between Cascade and Avista and Northwest Natural, both in Washington and Idaho, you know, just a public policy effort to eliminate natural gas from the energy sector yeah. uh, as a means to mitigate climate change or global warming. Um, you know, we will be in front of the legislatures to advocate on behalf of our customers and the costs that they'll incur. However, uh, th that's um, that is proving to be pretty challenging to persuade elected officials that there's still a place for natural gas in the in the utility sector. So we'll we'll have to see how that plays out. Yeah. Uh, but it's. You know, certainly a, a threat to how how people choose to use energy, and uh, you know the possibility that you know the legislatures will take that away yeah. is certainly possible. Yeah, because it's really that that um, bill's really going to affect future developments. Any new developments, they're trying to stop all that going into the right. You know, natural gas and the new developments and stuff like that. So, do you think that will um, drive cost even higher to developments and change their how they're doing things because I know isn't gas naturally a little cheaper than ele power electricity uh, yeah right so the the cost to heat a home uh, on gas versus electric gas is lower I I don't remember what that Delta is mm -hmm. you know it seems to change so often I can't I can't keep track of it um, but you know, on the east side of the state, where it's so much colder, sometimes it's hard to heat a home with a heat pump. Yeah. Just the way that a heat pump draws cold air out, converts it, that whole physics process. Yeah. Um, I, I think that that tends to be what the west side of Washington and Oregon tend to forget, is that it's a lot colder out here. Yes. And we all can't just, you know, flip to heat pumps. No. In, I don't know, echo or somewhere that, you know, we know is cold. And and so somewhere in the public policy discussion, I, I would hope that the legislature would recognize um, that that's a, a difficult challenge um, for homes to just switch to electric. Yeah, if you don't have now, a wood stove so, out here and or gas, right? you're running on strictly a emergency power electric power to heat your home and I mean, my right. heat pump kicks off at like i think like 28 degrees right yeah so well we're below that all for a long time here in eastern oregon right along the i-5 corridor with the way you know the climate is uh yeah you can get along with a heat pump uh, it there is a higher cost to heat a home overall but uh you don't have that that problem with it. it's just so cold that the heat pump is using, you know, some of those heating elements. And now, recognize I'm I'm public affairs. <laughs> I can't I would get a little too deep right. into how a heat pump works and <laughs> starts going over my head. Right. And and I'm I'm sure there's somebody listening who could school me in how oh, it works. <laughs> we're getting the basic information yeah. right. Right. Yeah. So yeah. so there there's the challenges you can 
call it Biden administration to <laughs> insulated co-tech, you know, it just, um, uh, I think, uh, a transitioning time for the energy sector. And yes. whatever public policies are developed, I would hope that um, somebody spends some time uh, trying to mitigate the economic harm some of these could create. And not just the economic harm in, you know, a food processor in Eastern Oregon deciding right. to move to Idaho, yeah. that, that's one consequence, but uh, how will people be able to afford to pay their monthly utility bill if you've got these policies that are, you know, forcing the private-owned electrics to change the generation uh, and you're pulling natural gas out of the equation, and what's that cost? You know, yeah. what, what does that that do to, to somebody's ability just to afford to keep the house warm? Right, that's, exactly. So is this, will this policy affect, like a person, like I'm a homeowner and I want a, a gas line to my home and I want a tank out there, would I still be able to have that or is it gonna take that away as well? Um, do you know that? Uh, under Oregon, so Governor Brown issued an executive order in March of 2020 uh, the Climate Protection Program or plan, which affects rule adoption by a host of state agencies. Where the gas utilities fit is under a DEQ set of rules. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard that cities have um, a, a whole nother land use set of rules under the division of uh, LCDC. Uh, but anyhow, so it's spread out along among a lot of agencies um, under the client, the CPP is what we call it. Uh, consumers can still call the gas utility for gas. Um, at some point in rule implementation by DEQ, it's going to be at what cost, right? Okay. What's the cost to do that? Uh, so it doesn't, doesn't preclude it. It just... Um, creates layers of carbon mitigation. So we've got to look at how much do our gas customers use? What's the carbon associated with that? And can we go buy offsets? Or how do we pay for um, offsets uh, in the market? So that's um, that that's where, where it could get expensive, but not necessarily telling you as a, a homeowner no, you can't call. You can still call Cascade and get a gas service. Gotcha. Oh, interesting. Well, that is some good information. You always good to. We always got to get into those politics right. and policies during the legislation session, right? Yeah. We just have to. Right. <laughs> and you know, I I know you know uh, Representative Smith has been in the legislature for a while. And yes. He I know he's tracking this. I would imagine he's getting a few phone calls. Uh, <laughs> if if there are people watching, um, but it, anyhow, I'm, I'm not encouraging anybody to start calling him because I, I think we could all imagine what side of this he's on. Right, exactly, I'm sure uh, we, yes. So. Yes, well, thank you. Um, yes. It's great to have you here. We're great to have you as a member, as yep. a supporter of our community. Um, you know, everything has to be a teamwork effort around here. And so, right. Thank you again for joining yeah. me. So uh, today I had Steve Vincent with Avesi Utilities joining me. He happened to just stop by and I said, here we are. So thank you guys. Thank you viewers for uh, hanging out with us for a little while and learn a little bit about Avesi Utilities. Uh, I'm going to say we'll be on live next week three different times. We're going to go live to Midway on Monday. And then we have Workforce Wednesday. On Wednesday, you'll have Anna Brown with uh, Port Moral Workforce Development joining me. And then on Thursday, I will have Chamber Talk with Tori, and then it will be Renee Grace with Mid-Columbia Title Company. She has some new changes that are happening within her, in her business, and she'll be sharing those with us. So stay tuned. We'll be back on next week um, for Chamber Talk with Tori. Have a great afternoon, everybody.